Hey, this is Taylor. Today I'm going to be tearing down the Amazon Echo Frames. These are part of Amazon's day one program, like the Echo Buds, which I also tore down on our website. This is basically a pair of glasses with Amazon's digital assistant built in, so you can put them on and ask it about the weather or upcoming events or take a phone call or anything like that. Interestingly, these do not use bone conduction to get sound into your ears. There are four micro speakers, two on each arm here, and those fire sound downward into your ears so that you can hear what the assistant is saying to you. Additionally, there are two microphones, one in each arm, I'm guessing, so that the assistant can hear you. There are three buttons on the right arm here. The smaller one triggers the digital assistant without you having to say the keyword. If you double press this button, this little red indicator light turns on and that means that the microphones are muted. This longer button is a volume rocker so you can turn the volume up and down. Then on the end here we have the charge port which is magnetic, always a nice feature. Amazon says these will last about one day on a full charge with intermittent use or about three hours with continuous audio playback at 60% volume. That number seems a little low to me given that there are other wearables in this category that have more functionality with smaller batteries and have longer battery life. But it is possible that Amazon just put a really small battery in here because these are surprisingly lightweight. Let's tear them down and find out. Alexa, enter teardown mode. Sorry. I don't know that. If these are anything like normal glasses, I'm guessing that there will be screws here close to the lens on either side that will hold the arms in place. And if we can get rid of those, we can detach the arms and that will make our lives a lot easier. Don't want to be too destructive here. Looks like it's coming up a little bit. So these little panels are just adhered in place it looks like. There's one, and we'll grab this one. So, these look like Phillips screws. Going to try Phillips Zero. That feels pretty good. These are super tight. I'm sure part of the problem here is there's adhesive also holding the screw in place. I'm probably pushing against some of that. All right. And there it is, that's the first screw. That was a little harder than I expected it to be, but not too bad, all things considering. I am going to leave the second screw for later. Let's just keep going on this arm. This is where all the interesting stuff is anyway. I'm bending these a little bit and I can see a small gap between this chrome piece and the rest of the frame here. I am going to stick an opening pick in there and see if I can get that separated. I'm going to try to tug on it a little bit and see if this whole inner piece will just separate. Maybe get an opening pick in there. The bottom part is separating easily, but the top part is not separating easily. I'm wondering if there's another fastener up there that I can't see, but I'm just going to keep praying at it and hope for the best. Oh, yeah, it just came out. There's still a cable connecting the arm to the front of the frame here for the status indicator LED just above the eyebrow. So I can't separate it yet, but it does look like this whole hinge mechanism is press fit into place here, as well as being screwed in place. So to disconnect that wire and fully separate the arm, I don't see any easy way to do that. I was hoping to separate the arm from the rest of the frame before we disassembled it, but maybe the connector for this cable is inside that arm. So I'm going to take my heat gun and try to separate the arm along this panel right here. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. Again, I don't think we need that much heat. Let's get our pick in there.
All right, that's both sides. Let's see if we can get it apart. Yep, there it goes. Don't want to break the plastic here on this thin part. Hopefully that's just the part of the same panel and we can wriggle it free. Hmm. It's a little bit stuck at the narrow end here. And then maybe it slides in this way. Oh yeah, there we go. So we're inside. Let me just disconnect this cable. On the inside of the arm here, we can see the two micro speakers and a microphone. Now that I have the arm apart, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is the cable that I was looking to disconnect earlier does indeed have a connector on the inside of the arm here. The bad news is that connector is glued in place. Separating the two halves of the arm has revealed one more screw that we can remove. So let's get that out of the way. This screw seems like it might separate the hinge from the rest of the arm, but we all know I've been wrong about this hinge before. I'm just trying to pry up the hinge here to see if it will disconnect now. We loosened this part with that screw. Looks like it comes out here does not seem particularly useful in our disassembly journey. I think I'm going to heat up this glue and try to disconnect this cable so that we can finally remove the arm from the rest of the frame. I think now all I need to do is unthread the cable from the hinge. Now I want to remove this board. It looks like it might be glued in place a little bit, so I'm going to hit it with some heat before I do any prying. And now let's see if we can get it out. Just prying with my spudger here, hoping to not break anything. Does look like it's coming out. Looks like there is a plastic frame underneath the board. I'm trying to get that up with the board here. And once it's all out, the touch panel for the outside of the frame here is left glued to the bottom of the arm here. Going to pry that out. There you go. On the first side of the main board, we have a Realtek Bluetooth low energy system on chip, a Cypress system on chip, a smaller board for the buttons, and then a capacitive touch strip. On the other side, we can see the charging pins, a Texas Instruments linear battery charger, and a Maxim low power stereo audio codec. A nice slice. Clips, clips, clips. Now let's flip it over and do the other side. And now we can pull it apart pull to release the last clip at the end here. That one does look like it's adhered a little bit. And we unclip this cable here and we are inside. Inside the other arm, we've got two more micro speakers and then the battery. If I would have known the battery was in this arm, I would have started here so that we could disconnect the battery before doing any disassembly. Before I can see just how small this battery is though, I'm going to need to get this board out of the way and on this board are a couple more gluey connectors. So let's dispatch those.
Now I'm going to pry up the board very carefully so I'm not damaging the battery. Very carefully and then pull it out. And there's the battery. It's lightly adhered in place and a lot bigger than I expected. It's a 0.589 watt hour LiPo battery cell, which is the equivalent of almost two sets of AirPod batteries and much bigger than the 0.07 watt hour battery that Jeff found in the Aura Ring that he just tore down. So how repairable are the Echo frames? Well, given this is the first pair of smart glasses we've torn down at iFixit, we're going to hold off on scoring them until we have a little more data about common repairs and other devices in the category. That said, assuming you could get replacement parts, something Amazon doesn't have a great track record for, the frames are actually fairly modular and you could conceivably perform battery, speaker, or even a full motherboard replacement without too much drama or destruction. I wouldn't say they are designed to be serviced, but given the form factor, I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, that's it for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. We've done a bunch of Amazon device teardowns in the past. You can find those on our website or our YouTube channel. Let us know what you think about the Echo Frames in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.